This uh, is number 121. Without objection, the clerk will report the amendment. An amendment number 12 printed in the congressional record offered by Mr. Flake of Arizona. At the end of the bill before the short title, insert the following. Section A, limitation on use of funds. None of the funds in this act shall be available for the Kansas Regional Prisons Museum, Lansing, Kansas, for educational and outreach programs. B, corresponding reduction of funds. The amount otherwise provided by this act for Institute of Museum and Library Services, Office of Museum and Library Services, Grants and Administration, is hereby reduced by $100,000. Pursuant to the order of the House of today, the gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Flake, and a member opposed will each control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Arizona. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. This amendment would prohibit $100,000 uh, from being used to fund educational and outreach programs at the Kansas Regional Prisons Museum at Lansing, Kansas. I've often joked uh, that the way we splurge uh, taxpayer funds on thousands of earmarks is, uh, is a crime, but uh, this earmark gives that sentiment a little new relevance. It appears that Leavenworth County in Texas uniquely hosts federal, state, military, and private prisons, and a regional prison museum uh, is proposed to honor that heritage. This prison museum building would be in addition to existing Lansing historical, the existing Lansing Historical Museum, complete with gallows chamber, replicated cells, and a 12 to 14 foot stone wall around the complex. All told, it appears that the prison museum addition would significantly increase the overall display area of the Lansing Historical Museum from roughly 1,500 square feet to nearly 8,000 square feet of display area. Here, I think it's a pretty clear case. It may have some local relevance, but being asked, asking taxpayers across the country uh, to pay for a prison museum here is probably not a wise use of funds here. The Kansas Director of Americans for Prosperity, a grassroots organization that focuses on taxpayer issues, called earmarking federal funds for this project wasteful federal spending and suggested that, quote, if there is truly a market for a prison museum, people who find it interesting should pay for it, not the 99.9% .9 of taxpayers who will never visit it. Uh, AFP, or Americans for Prosperity, also suggested that non-taxpayer sources of revenue could be found if there was adequate local support to build an economically viable prison museum in Lansing. With that, I'll reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves his time. For what purpose does the gentleman from Kansas rise? I rise on opposition. The gentlewoman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. First of all, uh, Mr. Flake, I would certainly like to just say thank you so much for this opportunity. I've had a lot of people on both sides of the aisle say that this whole thing is a complete waste of time, and I personally just want to thank you for the opportunity to stand up and talk about Leavenworth County, Kansas. We don't get that opportunity enough. Actually, we have many prisons. We probably have more prisons in Leavenworth. County, Kansas, and probably any other county in the United States. Let me tell you about three of them. Lansing, which is in Leavenworth County, hosts and houses the Kansas State Correctional Facility for the entire state. Then, of course, we have the United States Penitentiary. It is a historic uh, penitentiary. Got some names of people who have been housed there. George Machine Gun Kelly, the NFL running back Bam Morris, the uh, Leonard Peltier, Fritz Duquesne, a Nazi spy, and Robert Stroud, who later became the Birdman of Alcatraz. So it has huge historic uh, uh, history there. But it st currently still houses close to 2,000 prisoners for the United States government, Mr. Flake. Then let me tell you about the detention barracks, which is part of, the, uh, of Fort Leavenworth. Actually, for the first time in, say, 50 years, a unit from Fort Leavenworth was actually sent to Iraq because they were so expert in detentions and in, in, in handling these kinds of extremely difficult and sensitive issues that they went to Iraq to try to clean up some of the mess that was made by some of the, some of the detention problems. So, Mr. Flake, I would just say to you that I don't think this is a joking manner in any way, shape, or form. It's very easy for you to go tell the people of Arizona that you're tough on crime. But let me say that it's a very difficult thing to do, and we take a great deal of pride about it in, in Kansas. Um, it does take a lot more than talk to say that you are tough on crime. The local residents are proud of their heritage, and rightly so, and they see it as part of their responsibility to preserve this history. 
I mean, talk about what they're doing. They're raising $2 million of private funds for this. So I'm, pl I'm proud. And I, again, I just thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to talk about this. We're asking for a, a $100,000 to add to this museum. But let me talk about one other thing. Mr. Flake, I don't know whether you understand this. No, excuse me, just a moment. No, I'm, I am not willing to yield my time at this point. Mark remarks to the chair. Okay, excuse me, I'm sorry. I thank you. Real life corrections work is sometimes dangerous and it involves loss, loss of life and injury. This, uh, this memorial, this museum will actually be a memorial to those fallen who have, again, at the U.S. Penitentiary, as well as our state, as well as our fort, and the detention barracks that are there, this memorial will offer an appropriate tribute to the sacrifices that these people have made. So again, it is very, very easy to say that we are tough on crime. The men and women who do, in the, who do the, the corrections work in Leavenworth County, Kansas, understand that it takes a heck of a lot more than talk to get behind this and be tough on crime to be able to do uh, what we know needs to be done in this country. Again, I would just, uh, I am glad to have the opportunity to stand up here. Leavenworth County has a rich tradition. We are, we were part of the border wars when it came to the, the founding of uh, settling one of the biggest issues in this country about slavery. We have the United States Penitentiary, which is, which is just so intense in its history. We have Fort Leavenworth, which has played a huge role in keeping our country safe. So I appreciate this. We would like as many people to come. This is going to be a tourist attraction, and we're inviting as many people as we can to Leavenworth County, Kansas, while we're building this museum, as certainly as well as after it is built. I yield or I reserve the balance of my time. Thank gentleman you. gentleman reserves her time. The gentleman from Arizona. Again. I, I don't uh, want to diminish the, the need that the locals feel to have this museum. Uh, people around the country have varying needs and wants for museums, whether it's a teapot museum in North Carolina or the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in, in Ohio. Uh, you know, local needs are, are such, and people visit, and tourists find that interesting. But why should the federal taxpayer be on the hook? When do we say no? Is there a time at which we say enough is enough? We can't handle any more. 1,300 earmarks. Yes, it's down from the heyday of 2005, and I make no excuses for my own party for doing that. But is it right? When should we say enough is enough and simply say we shouldn't be funding using ta federal taxpayer dollars for these kind of projects? And with that, I yield back. The gentleman yields back his time, the gentlewoman from Kansas. Yes, again, Madam Speaker, or Madam Chairwoman, I would just uh, reiterate that the people of Leavenworth County, Kansas, are proudly and, and working hard to raise $2 million of private funds. And I stand before this body today and am proud to say that $100,000 uh, will go to this. And I, again, I, I am very proud to do this on behalf of Leavenworth County, Kansas, and invite everyone to come see the rich tradition that makes Leavenworth County a great place. I yield. The gentlewoman yields back her time. The question is on the amendment. Oh, the gentleman from Wisconsin. I am moved to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. And I will take just one minute to observe this. The gentleman from Arizona said in reference to this project, enough is enough. Uh, let me ask, why don't we say enough is enough to spending $600 billion in a futile and fruitless and misguided war in Iraq? Why don't we say enough is enough in putting the needs of millionaires, well, we're going to get $57 billion in tax cuts this year, ahead of the needs of average working people, with respect to investments in their education, their job training, their community development, and their health care. I think, indeed, enough is enough, but we ought to be saying that about the right things. And I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back the balance of his time. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Arizona. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. The amendment is not adopted. On that, I'd ask for a recorded vote. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Arizona will be postponed.